Mike Reese with one of the newest Saluki Hall of Famers, Ed Thompson. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank e. you. E.T. Thank you very e. much. E.T. Everybody yep. still calls you E.T. now? Uh, no. That it's, was an athlete. It's different eras. You know, there's, I could take you way back and tell you names you haven't even heard yet. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yes, true. <laughs> What's the honor mean to you? Uh, you know what, Mike? It's, it's exhilarating and yet a bit of relief. I, I, I knew I, I felt I had a body of work that was worthy. And um, it was something that I coveted, and I'm glad it's here. You know, the impetus to put you in I personally believe was the last three or four Hall of Fame dinners where athletes and coaches would get up and would credit you. And so one year, that's fine, but now it becomes two, three in years and it's multiple people. And now all of a sudden people say, well, maybe Ed ought to be in there. <laughs> maybe Ed ought to be in there. That has to be, um, that has to, and I know you heard those things. I, that has to be so satisfying to know that the people that you worked with think you're worthy of this because your colleagues and those sort of things generally are the biggest critics. Yes, and it does mean a lot, but it's certainly not the first time I've heard it because our student athletes and our coaches were always very appreciative and they would always, you know, uh, communicate how grateful they were and, and the coaches that we very seldom had players Miss playing time and and the the student athletes for you know helping them um, pursue their dreams for lack of a better word and and every time uh, they were injured it wasn't for lack of opportunity if they wanted treatment and they wanted an opportunity to get back we provided it. Mm -hmm. What um, what are you most proud of? Um, the way that the way that we conducted our program throughout the length of my tenure. Um, Sally Perkins, head women's trainer, and also the uh, um, student education program director, and Dr. Raleigh Perkins, who was our, uh, essentially our team physician, mm -hmm. and he had to be the front line of care for our student athletes because of the way our insurance was set up. So he saw, he was the first one to see 90% of our student athletes, mm -hmm. whether it be illness or injury. But we were together for over 25 years, and that continuity of care uh, shone through all the time. There, there was never a policy or a situation that it didn't matter if it was men's basketball, women's tennis, didn't matter. All of our student athletes were treated the same. One of the impacts that you had on, on players and coaches was as a confidant, which is Good trainers, that's what they do. That's who the players talk to. That's who the coaches talk to. And, and you get to be the referee. That doesn't, you weren't good at that right out of the shoot. I, I don't mean, I meant that only, and I say that only because of experience. That's something that I'm sure you have to experience and to learn. When did you feel confident in being able to do that as well as you ended up being able to do it? Well, it's really a pursuit. And when I first started working with Doc Spackman, I quickly realized that he was one of the most respected persons on this campus and in the community. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if student athletes were gonna buy into what I was asking them to do, and if coaches were gonna be receptive for me to have limitations and recommendations for their student athletes, that I had to earn their respect. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not something I took lightly. And um, I've used the term command respect before. And what that means is others have observed your actions and appreciated them to extend that respect to you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not done like if somebody demands respect, they're doing it by threat or intimidation or something like that. That's not what command respects means. That means you've earned it. You were the guy frequently the players first called, right? Well, I hope you're not referring to after hours, but, <laughs> <laughs> no, but really in the, in the, in the grand scheme of things, that's part of athletics. Yes. The good and the bad. Yes. You well, were the one that they came to first. Yes. And they knew I had the coach's ear and they knew that I would help them. And, um, whether it be a legitimate injury or a situation that 
you know, they're concerned about how it's going to be taken disciplinary wise. I, yes, I, I tried to be their friend, but they always knew that eventually whatever they were telling me, I couldn't keep from others yeah. if, if others needed to hear. Did you often feel like a referee, um, a confidant, and, and, but also a referee between a player and a coach? Uh, I would, I would go to bat for both sides. I mean, I would let the student athlete know what the coach's expectations were. And if we were falling short of those, I would communicate those to the student athlete. But if the student athlete needed protection from the coach or himself, as far as participation, I absolutely stood up for him. Yeah. Yes. Do you have a favorite moment, be it training wise or just being on the floor or in, on the field with football? Um, well, this is big. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's true. I didn't really quite have that in mind. The, uh, uh, the championship game, of course, was extremely rewarding, mm -hmm. but I had very little time to to absorb it because we flew home the next morning. I went home, washed underwear, and I was on a flight to Las Vegas to catch up with the basketball team. So, you know, you didn't get to enjoy it very long before you were off to the next venture. But no, I have to say, as far as, there were hundreds of tremendous moments. And one of the most disappointing moments was, you know, the, the loss to Kansas when we had, I thought were two questionable calls and a couple missed layups. But um, no, I have to say the relations and the, the relationships that I've built. I, I got a call from a student athlete that was here in town that had to uh, go back home to Atlanta tonight because his wife is sick and he intended to be here. Uh, I have a couple other close friend, friends that have flown in here this evening uh, for this event. So no, the relationships are the biggest. I, I'm sorry I didn't give you one moment, but that's what's most important. When did you feel you had the most impact? Was there a person, a, a team? season well it's you know I in my you don't have to name the person no in my communications you know it's it's important to me that 50% 50, 50 of our men's basketball team went to the postseason when I was involved mm -hmm. for a mid-major that's a lot 15 out of yeah. years and I'm not talking about alphabet soups it was the NIT or the NCAA um, I always felt <laughs> Uh, I always felt the football coaches knew I was doing what I could. Um, I mean, there was one coach that questioned how many people were going to miss practice one day, and I simply told him, I said, hey, I didn't hit it. I didn't hit a one of them. All I did was evaluate them. The fact that that one and that one and that one can't practice, I, I can't help that it totals 30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. Thank you for the time, and more importantly, congratulations. Man. Thank well you, deserved. Mike. It means a lot. I know you had a lot to do with it, too. Thank you. Ed Thompson, Saluki Hall of Famer.